Hello my friends and welcome back to another video. In this video, I am going to walk you all through my brand new website and show you how you too can have dynamically updating content on a statically generated web page. So this new website of mine is built using Hugo. Hugo is a static site generator. And what that basically means is that it takes a bunch of files, typically markdown files, and it spits out plain old HTML. So everything that you see on this website is, yeah, it's statically generated as HTML when you visit this website you just download a single html file and everything is displayed there is no clunky javascript framework behind the scenes um, no crazy jsx templating it's just plain old html and it's pretty great so why don't we take a closer look at the different sections of this website so we have recent posts, recent videos, and recent highlights. These are all dynamic uh, sections of the website, meaning that whenever I have a new post on Mastodon, whenever I have uploaded a new video to YouTube, whenever I have a new highlight on one of my Notado feeds, it's going to appear here. Uh, so let's take a look at first at how this data is pulled in. Um, the data for Macedon is pulled in da, 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 from an RSS feed. Generally, for most Macedon instances, you can just have you know the URL of the server forward slash the um, the username and add dot RSS as a suffix. And then you'll get this RSS feed, which consists of a bunch of items, which contain a link, which contain a description. And sometimes they will also contain a media content, which contains a URL to a picture. In this case, here is a picture of me from earlier today, walking down by Madrona Park Beach in Seattle. Uh, yeah, so that's the, the Mastodon side of things. The YouTube side of things, they they don't have an RSS feed that conforms to you know the RSS spec, but they do have an XML feed. And every time you have a new video uploaded to your channel, uh, you have this feed with a bunch of entries. So here we have items as part of the RSS spec. Whatever the hell YouTube is using, it uses entry instead. It has this custom YT stuff, but you know, it has the title, it has the video ID, it has everything that we need to embed uh, the latest videos onto our website, as you can see here. And then going on a little bit further down, we have the recent highlights and these are powered by Notado. So these are mine, um, my feeds, they're all here. You can pick one and you can subscribe via RSS. That will give you the RSS link. And you know, it's another RSS feed that adheres to the RSS 2.0 spec. It has a bunch of items. It contains the highlights and the original links that they came from and you know the title and some other stuff as well but for our purposes we only really use the highlight and the link to go back to the original source so as i mentioned earlier all of this that you see here is completely statically generated html that does not mean, however, that when you come to the markdown file for this, that each one of these things is hard coded, right? So we have recent posts here, recent posts, recent posts. And here you have this little snippet. It says Mastodon at this URL with limit three. All right, look at recent videos. I don't have all of this stuff. 
uh, written by hand in Markdown. Here I just have YouTube, the URL that I'm fetching the YouTube data from, and a limit of one, two, three. Go down a bit further to the recent highlights. Here in the software feed, I don't have every single one of these, right? You know, I'm just, I have this little snippet for Notato with the URL and the limit. So these things are called shortcodes, and this is the syntax for invoking them. Curly brace, curly brace, angle brace, the thing, the arguments, um, and angle brace, and curly brace, and curly brace. So we can take a look at each of these, really. Um, we check if we have a URL, then we assign variables for the URL and the limit. The limit is a number. And we use this built-in Hugo thing called get remote. So we'll look up the URL. We will run transform and marshal so that we can actually do stuff with the data. And then we use this range loop, right? And it's saying, get me the first, however many the limit is, of whatever is in channel dot item, right? So it'll come here and see channel. Oh, that's nice. I didn't know that happened in Firefox. So you open up channel and then you go to each item. So for the first three of these, right? We're going to loop through them and we're going to have a div and that div is like this div here, right? Uh, and maybe this is a better example. So if we have an image which is stored at this path, uh, we'll show the image in an image block. And then if we have text which comes under the description um, attribute, then, you know, we'll We'll pipe out the the description, and then right at the at the very end, we'll have a little paragraph with a link back to the original post. So made a post earlier, making a new video about how I have dynamically updating RSS feeds embedded into my statically generated Hugo website, and there it is. Pretty pretty cool. Pretty simple. Uh, a similar thing, but of course with the slightly different feed format for YouTube. Uh, we're doing a little check to make sure uh, that a URL has actually been passed. Then we'll assign variables for the URL and the limit. We will get whatever is at that URL, unmarshal it so that we can do stuff with it. And we're gonna say for the first however many entries, keep making divs. Um, inside that div, I want to have the title and, and a link back, right? And then I want to have an iframe in which this is, the, whatever video it is, is embedded. And, you know, and set the title for it as well. Again, nothing crazy, pretty simple. Uh, and then finally, for the sake of completeness, for the highlights, uh, yeah, we have all these so we're gonna have um, we're gonna have a div for each item uh, in the first three in our case items we're gonna have a paragraph of the highlight itself truncated to 300 characters so that it all looks more or less uniform and then at, a, at the bottom we'll have a link back to wherever this comment or this highlight came from Again, I, I think conceptually this is pretty simple, but if anything about this does not make sense, leave me a message in the comments and I will try to clarify. So this is a little bit closer to, um, to you know, the end goal of dynamically updated content. But right now, this is just like you run it once and it will get the latest content. Um, and it will deploy that. But when new posts are made, when new videos are updated, when new highlights are published, nothing's happening there, right? Like we, how are we, how are we rebuilding the website so that we have the latest, uh, the latest information, the latest data from the feeds, right? So 
Hugo, um, it seems like they kind of pushed deploying by Netlify. You can do this on Netlify. You can do this with any provider that you can deploy your static website to, right? I just so happen to be using Cloudflare. Uh, Cloudflare pages. Cloudflare has a very nice API which you can hit to trigger redeployments of you know whatever the last version of your website was. So I actually made uh, a blog article about this um, in which I have you know the the code for you to copy and paste. Uh, in that article, I mentioned that you know the docs for Cloudflare pages. Uh, has this section about using a mixture of JavaScript workers and cron triggers to rebuild and redeploy a Cloudflare pages website every hour. Uh, I did mention that I thought this was <laughs> kind of overkill, and I really think it is quite overkill. I mean, you can come here and do this if you really want. If you're more comfortable with JavaScript, I try and avoid it whenever possible. Also, I don't really see the point of, of locking myself even further into the Cloudflare pages platform for no particular reason, you know? So what I decided to do was add um, another systemd timer to uh, a remote box that I have that I use, you know, for builds and for other stuff. Um, and yeah, I just thought I'd add a timer that uh, runs hourly that hits the Cloudflare API to trigger a build. And this happens every hour. And if there is new content that is being pushed to those feeds within the last hour, the first three of you know whatever that content, the newest, freshest content happens to be, will be, uh, it'll be added, you know, when we rebuild. We will fetch. We'll you know we'll do this fetch. We'll get the the first three, right? Um, and we will compile all that down into a plain old HTML file that will be fetched by the user when they load the website. So we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of this in action, right? So saw uh, an interesting comment. I want to save this to Notato, right? So I'm going to go to my Notato account and I'm going to tag this as related to software development and also JavaScript. Because my feed automatically gets populated by these tags, development and software, uh, yeah, it's in my feed now, right? And if I were to look at the RSS for this, hey, I've got mixed feelings about Rome. Cool comment, cool story. So imagine we are at the top of the hour. We are not, but one of the nice things about systemd timers is that you can trigger them whenever you want. You can see from the history actually that this has been happening on the hour plus some extra stuff that I've been deploying in between. So we're going to kick that off. And should see, yeah, a new one has kicked off as a, in progress here, right? Um, so that's what's happening every hour when um, this piece of code gets triggered on my remote server. And so, pretty pretty quickly um, hey deployed a few seconds ago pretty quickly this will get updated and we can see here now this comment that we saved I've got mixed feelings about Rome um, is right at the top of the recent highlights for the software feed and that's basically how it works for everything right for the new posts on Mastodon for the new videos and you can do this with any RSS feed it doesn't even have to be an RSS feed it can be a JSON feed it can be whatever kind of feed you just need to make the right short code um, figure out the you know the the display that you want the styles that you want all that sort of stuff loop through you know you can loop through all of them if you want um, I just think it's nice to, to have a limit and then direct people towards the, the source. But yeah, that's, that's all you do.
um, and then you set a timer, an hour works for me. Maybe you could do um, daily if you have less frequent updates. If you have more frequent updates, you could do it every, I don't know, every 15 minutes, every 10 minutes, every five minutes, who knows? But yeah, that's, that's really all it takes to continue to benefit from the excellent development experience of a static website generator like Hugo, like Jekyll, like however many others. Uh, and yeah, just to reiterate, you don't need a big, heavy, ugly JavaScript framework like Next.js or React or Svelte or any of these things that completely, completely overkill for a personal website with some automatically updating dynamic data. That's all there is to it. Um, I hope that this was clear uh, for those of you watching. If it was not clear, um, if you have any additional questions, leave me a comment and I will do my best to demystify as much as I can uh, in the response to the comments or if there's anything that needs a deeper dive, I'm happy to make a follow-up video. Uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you hit subscribe. I plan to make more videos like this. Um, and especially if you're interested in NixOS, I know I touched a little bit on that here. I didn't go too deep into it deliberately, but if you would uh, be interested in seeing some more NixOS content, let me know in the comments and definitely subscribe because there is gonna be some pretty cool, interesting, useful NixOS comment content coming up pretty soon as well. So that is it for the end of this video. This is the end of the video. And whatever you end up doing today, I hope you all have a very, very nice day. Goodbye.